Salutations friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I am reviewing Rose from Ellis Brooklyn. If you'd like to know what I think about this fragrance, then keep watching. For transparency purposes, I bought this. This was not given to me review. And Ellis Brooklyn is a vegan and cruelty-free uh, fragrance line. So if you are looking for vegan cruelty-free perfumes, this is a great line to check out. First things first, there's a lot of notes in here. Musk, lemon, peony. I know I said that flower wrong. And rose. This smells like a very mainstream, crowd-pleasing, musky floral fragrance. If you like fragrances from Gucci, Dolce & Gabbana, Marc Jacobs, you're going to like the DNA of this fragrance. Now, this fragrance does open on the sharper side. The citrus in this is pithy and bitter and very sharp, but that sharpness fades away after I'd say about 20 to 30 minutes. It's still there. It's still very zesty, pithy, bitter, a sharpness to it which i think works really well to make this a great floral fragrance that works nicely in heat and humidity but if you do not like sharp openings or you don't like sharp citruses in your fragrances specifically a lot of people don't like sharp rose fragrances i would definitely recommend trying this fragrance on your skin first but the sharpness is more there in the opening and less in the entire lifespan of the scent now when i first spray this on my skin i get that zesty very bright very bitter lemon again sharp but still very nice the sharp for me is more of a positive and less than a negative because that sharpness is almost like an acidity that adds a brightness and what that does is like in heat and humidity it's very uplifting and it's very fresh and refreshing in a way that is not just watery and sweet and aquatic the rose in here is semi-fruity but i find that the peony is more of the star of the show than the rose which is why i say you know, don't look at this and think this is going to be a rose scent. It is a floral fragrance where it borders line on watery flowers with a touch of fruity rose in there. I do find it to be very pretty, very easy to wear, a very complimentary fragrance because of its DNA of just being a sparkly, musky white flower. You see a lot of those scents in very kind of like almost fragrances marketed towards young women, like young adult women, like in their early 20s. And I think the reason why is, is that a lot of times people are looking for fresh, youthful fragrances that still have a little edge of sophistication to them. And I think that musk is just one of those notes that can be very sophisticated, but doesn't ruin a youthfulness in a lot of scents and specifically floral fragrances. And I think in watery scents too, it adds a little bit of an edge to fragrances that I think is really nice and pleasing and a lot of people really like to wear. They want to smell sophisticated and elegant, but they don't want to smell juvenile. They want to smell youthful and fresh. And I think musk is a, just a note that I see in a lot of those types of fragrances for more than just, you know, longevity and muskiness. I think it's a really smart addition over specific woods or other things that could be used. Rose from Ellis Brooklyn has that beautiful muskiness to it and that citrusy sharpness, I think gives it a little bit of an edge while still being a beautiful, sparkly, watery floral fragrance with a touch of rose in there. The DNA in this is nothing new. The DNA in this fragrance is nothing created. You're gonna smell this and you're gonna smell this someplace else. But the nice thing about this fragrance is that its price point's really good. I like the touch of rose. I like that the citrus in there is a little bit sharp. It's a little bit different. And at the same time, if you're looking for fragrances that smell like this, that smell really good, and vegan cruelty-free fragrance is something that's important to you, I think that's where this fragrance is going to shine. Now, as always, just because a fragrance might have the exact same notes, a different house might have different suppliers, their corks might be created a different way, so it might change on your skin, it might smell different on your skin, so just because this might smell like something very similar from Gold, um, Gold I was gonna say, Gucci, Dolce & Gabbana, Marc Jacobs, always try it on your skin first. I don't know if it was in this video or when I pre-filmed this video, but I said that you can get these fragrances on Ulta online or you can find them in most, I believe, Sephora's where you can try this on your skin. So I would definitely, as always, recommend trying this on your skin before purchasing, specifically because of that sharpness and also because musky florals can be beautiful, but you might like this composition, like this DNA, and you might find that it smells something you already own. I mean, I really hate to say it. I'm not trying to talk down about this fragrance because I do really enjoy the scent. 
This is a morning scent I like to wear. I've been wearing it for the past few weeks in the morning when I wake up. It's a very enjoyable fragrance. It's very pretty, but it's nothing new. It's nothing groundbreaking. So I think the real player of this in regards to should you check it out or not has to be the fact that it's vegan or cruelty free. But if you like um, sparkly, musky, feminine, very youthful, flirty, uh, watery, musky, sparkly fragrances, then I think checking this out, I mean, at least it's worth sniffing it a few times. It does smell very pretty. In any case, that's my review of Ellis Brooklyn Rose Eau de Parfum. I do like this fragrance. It's nothing groundbreaking or special, but it is very pretty and performs very well. So it's worth checking out if you like these types of scents. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Bye!